All right, I believe we're live. Jared is studying. We are live. A little early, but we'll go ahead and get start early and get done early, and everybody can go home and get them a nice, long, sugar-induced nap. <laughs> I know that's what I feel like is coming on right now. So, all right, Psalms chapter eleven is where we were last week. Does anybody remember what we talked about? Really? Even the things that threaten you, trust in the Lord. Yep. Any further elabor elaboration? Well, not necessarily the foundation that the Lord has said. We actually took, looked at the foundation. It's, it, it's, it's foundations, plural. And that can mean governmental bodies or anything. So when, when, when things that we're as, as people, as humans, as, as, as men and women are told that we can rely upon become fragmented and, and, and weak, there is still a, a stronger foundation yet that one can stand on. The early part of Psalms 11 is a plea to David essentially to to flee and hide. And the last part of Psalms 11 is David saying that um, his God is bigger than their fear and the things that they're afraid of. Um, anything else? And that'll bring us to Psalms 12, which... From my study that I have been able to look at is a is a continuation of themes uh, from Psalm 11. Uh, we're still in these early early in if you look at Psalms 12 is a Psalm of David, uh, and we're still in the early um, parts of the book, and this is still considered to be written roughly in the time that David was. Uh, fleeing from Saul. Um, the first verse says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faith, faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Now, David points, it, it, David opens, and I think he always does, or he ha has typical with kind of a a refrain that is supposed to frame some of the issues, and this one is "Help, Lord." It, it is a it is a plea for aid of some type. Why? For the ungodly, for for the uh, not for the ungodly, for the godly man ceaseth, ceaseth, for the faithful man from among the children of men, a fail from among the children of men. Now, um, he is saying that he was witnessing a falling away of God's people, people that he used to be able to rely fairly heavily upon, people that um, in his own, and, and again, like I said, this is a continuation of themes from Psalms chapter 11, and Psalms chapter, Psalms chapter 12 elaborates further on it. Psalms chapter 11 wants you to look at the world and say, okay, the world is not something that you can rely upon. The Lord is something you can rely on. And this, is even, this even takes it further and says, people that you believe to be religious or Christian, or they also cannot be relied upon. They are also fallible. They are also weak. He says, for the godly man ceaseth. What is he ceasing from? Well, he's ceasing from being godly. He, he is, and we, we can see that all about us. We, um, uh, and for the, and the, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. This is, this is people that had historically been able to place their trust in God. All but gone, all but failing, and we we can see fragments of our own uh, uh, churches and our sister churches of of people that are falling by the wayside. People you never would have considered uh, going about that way, and yet they are. 
what is the root cause of this, though? I, I think it's actually in both of the examples. It says, for the godly man ceaseth. And then you have, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. People are going to let you down. People are not going to uh, always be there to bolster you up. If you have any confidence in me, I promise you I will let you down. Uh, if you have if you have any designs on looking at junior, uh, Brother Junior as a bastion of righteousness, eventually he will fail. Uh, Brother Larry will not always be the shining example of what the, what a righteous person be. Why? Because we're still just people. We're still and we still have flesh to contend with, and and David David is calling for help because not only are these good people falling after their flesh, they're falling completely away because of who they are. They're men, they're people, and then he goes on and says they speak vanity. Every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart, do they speak? Now, what are they falling to? Vanity. They're falling to lips lip service. That they are, and I think this is one thing, especially in 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 churches that maybe aren't quite our stripe, but in you know if you just were put put everybody under the umbrella, and I definitely don't want them under the same umbrella as us, but the Christian umbrella. If 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 some if a worldly person was to label Christian people these denominations, this is the things that they fall to, because what they're saying is not what they believe what they're saying is not what they is is not what they present to be and with one with with one side of their mouth they can say brother Larry we would just love for you and your church to come fellowship with us over at you know over here at the Methodist Church and it'll be such a good time and I know we're both different denominations but we can bless the Lord together and with the other side of their mouth they're telling sodomites that hey it's okay to marry other men, uh, you know, it's it's it, it's okay to compromise your morals as long as you love Jesus. And this double-hearted, this this, and actually, I looked up the 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 vanity to speak of here, and it, it actually can can just mean straight lying. It, it it is it is it is what Jesus would later um, reference as. The Pharisees having mouths that are open, open sepulchers. They appear to be good people. And with their mouth, they talk like good people. But what's coming out of them is rotten. Has no basis in soundness. Now, to be rotten, if, if, if you're to look at a corpse, a, a corpse has no soundness of flesh. In fact, you leave a corpse sitting long enough, and it will it will wither away to nothing at all. Left to the elements, it will become part of the elements again. And so, when he says that their mouths are open sepulchers, not only do you get, and we can we can think about an open like if you was to dig up a casket and and bring it up, and how awful it would smell the first time you open that thing because it had such rotten detritus inside of it. But and and you can think about that when you think about open sepulchers. But I think it's even further than that. What they're what is inside of them has no soundness. What is inside of them has no life. What is inside of them is crumbling away, is rotting away, is 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 eventually going to run out, is going to expire. And and you can you can attribute there's a bunch of different ways that you could allegorize this. You could say, well, the the reason that they're saying that is because they're not saved within. They're dead inside. That's a good way of looking at it. You could also say that the the things that they used to believe they're just deteriorating away. Inside of them, they don't really believe anything that they're saying anymore because honestly, the the time and the elements and everything else is just rotting and eroding away everything that they thought they said before. And if, I think the Pharisees were definitely in that category. You're talking about the religious elite of the day. Did they know who Jesus was? I'm fully convinced they knew who Jesus was. They, they knew exactly what he was. And because he was not what they wanted, needs he be crucified.
and everything that they believed, all the you know they got they they held the the the, the five books of the Pentateuch so close to their chest, the Law and the Prophets, that Jesus or that uh, that that uh, that Stephen would later later tell him, hey, you you killed all those people. You, you act like you love Isaiah so much, but Isaiah had uh, some hard times with you people. And everything they they think that they hold dear inside is just just rotten. And so they, they, you have the, you have this double speak. You have you have these this vanity that's coming from the mouth. Uh, you know, ever ever heard of? Uh, don't read. Don't don't believe half of what you read and less of what you hear, because people will lie to you. The first sin that was ever committed in this universe was what? A lie. And I'm not even talking about the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Lucifer lied to himself. And what was that based on? Well, it's based on this word that we see at the top, uh, at, at ver the third word that you see in ver verse 2 here, vanity. He looked at himself and says, I can become like God. I can ascend to the heavens. I can sit upon that throne. He lied to himself, but the very first sin was a lie. And, and, and from the moment that we started partake, mankind started partaking in his lies. We have been liars ever since. And so, when when David is framing all this up, he's, he's he, he 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 is stating a fact about man, but he's also stating a fact about man men among God's people. I'm very wary of people that just say things that sound good to me. They never confront me about nothing. They 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 never they never challenge me on anything, and and not that I necessarily like to be challenged, but. You can always you always have a a a a, a, a barrier a a, 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 a a spiritual red flag if you will when someone is just telling you how awesome everything is with you because we know intrinsically even if we're not able to admit it to ourselves that not everything is great with me. <laughs> Watch these people because I think they align with the people that David is warning about us here in this verse. Verse 3, The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said with their tongue we will prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. Now, verses uh, 3 and 4 uh, go together. It says, The Lord shall cut off all the flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. And then there's a colon, which means that verse uh, that verse 4 is connected to verse 3. It says, so he says he's going to cut off all these flattering lips. He says he's going to, and, and, and the tongue that sp speaketh proud things. Why? The colon is the why. Verse 4 is why that he's going to be doing this. Who have said with their tongue, we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Now this, and, and, and one of the reasons that I did bring up Lucifer, this is, this is Lucifer's thought, thought pattern here. It says, with, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. So they're claiming ownership over something that is clearly God's. And, is, and, the, and then goes further and says, who is Lord over us? Mankind, as as a being, has been looking to the heavens, and 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 I think I said this in in the last in the last class. You can look through thousands of different cultures all over the ancient world, and they all make gods. But every one of their gods are like men, because we we seek to exalt ourselves, and now atheists and the the modern world at large worships science which further elevates mankind. Now, the reason that mankind attributed to, you know, the elements and things that happened in ancient times to gods that acted like men is because they couldn't explain why it thundered. They couldn't explain why the volcano randomly erupted at, at any given time. They couldn't explain tidal waves or, or why the wind blowed the way it did. But now we've become smart enough that we know where the origin of a lot of these things are. And so man can say, look how, look how intelligent I am. Who is Lord over? We are the masters of our own destiny. We, 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 uh, a, a, a fate and a God does not control us. We live by our own whim. We die by our own whim. And if you go up further, and in the, in the verse says, it says, with our tongue we will prevail. Now this is, I think this could be a direct re reference to Lucifer because how did he take so many people with him? How many take so many angels with his, with his tongue? He beguiled 
a third of God's created beings. We think about angels as being pure, and I think I, I think two thirds of them were. <laughs> but we think about angels as being unfallible, and yet one archangel was able, with his with his tongue alone, to convince them to go to war with God, to go to war with the the leader of God's troops, Michael. And with that same tongue damned an entire race to hell. With our tongue we will prevail. And and I think this still holds true today. Words are the weapon of the day. Well, Brother Adam, what do you mean by that? Look at Facebook. The things that are posted, the things that are said, true or not, they are they are taken as fact once they are said by somebody once they are posted once they are once once, once somebody you look at the look at the media once somebody a, a man in a in a very sharp suit or a lady in a in a in a in a in a, ver, in a very sharp uh, 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 blouse looks over that tv monitor at you and says x and y is what happened today we take that as gospel and they prevail with their words. Look at Capitol Hill. There's a group of people that literally do warfare and do a, a, and conquer every day by the by the words of their mouth. They they have built the earth has built an entire kingdom upon flattering lips. And this has begun to infect the churches. This has begun to infect to to infect our day to day life. Things that people say, and 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 I I think it's very interesting that in the New Testament that the Bible says that that we shouldn't be busybodies. Why? Because busybodies sometimes they've got real things to say, but most of the time it's just things they've heard that they're parroting back to someone with no basis in any actual reality in which we live in. And what that get what that gains you is is clicks, is a fragmentation, and we've already talked about foundations in the last lesson. When you start breaking things up, there's no strength left there. This war with our words, our mouth it said, uh, the New Testament says that it, that that the tongue is a member that that, that uh, this is paraphrasing, it literally can't be bridled. You can't bra- it's it, 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 you can't you 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 can't put a harness upon it and keep it going. Uh, the one of the, and I don't do this very well, but when I think about it, I always find that it goes well for me. Just when somebody's saying something to you, the best thing, the one of the best things you can say is nothing at all. Just let them go. Just let them spout over because they're they're doing this. They're they're allowing their tongue their tongue to run like a, a, a an unbroken stallion across the pasture. And if you can prevent yourself, not only have you removed yourself from that battle, you've also not been begun to participate in this, in this, in this tongue wagging, and in in, in 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 the literal potential fragmentation of a church. A lot of church, I'll even say, let's talk about Bumpus Mills um, when it broke up. What was what was one of the precipitating factors? People talking behind other people's backs. Once again, I want to go back to verse 1 and, and say, it says, for the godly man ceases. The, this tongue-wagging problem runs, runs all over the world and runs deep into the churches, and we can cross problems with our words. A good rule of thumb is if you ain't got nothing nice to say, just don't say it. And I'm not saying turn a blind eye to sin. I'm not saying turn, turn, you know, act like everything's all right when it's not. But tongue wagging for tongue wagging's sake looks like to me that it's a real problem. That it become that it becomes an issue. Um, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Now he, this verse five again, another continuation of uh, verse four. It says it says that uh, it, it it says that for for the oppression of the uh, of the poor and for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise. Now, 
All of these things that are being said, this, this tongue wagging, this, this, this open sepulchers, these unbridled tongues, they're against, when they go against God's people, when they, when, when they, when they and it actually uses the words, when, when these people puff up at, God, at, at God's people, people that are trying to do right, what does God do? Now will I rise, saith the Lord. It is always very interesting when you see God always sits on his throne. It's always interesting when you see him stand up. Very few times in scripture do you actually see that. One of them was the stoning of Stephen. When we start this tongue wagging against some of God's people, God says he's going to stand up. And this stand up doesn't look like the type of stand up like, oh, look, look, my child's coming home. Let's give a round of applause for a job well done. No, this kind of stand up is like when, when, when Gracie or AJ do something wrong and I have to stand up. You don't want God to stand up. I always, I always like a lot of parenting today, and, and sometimes I catch myself doing this just because you, you get so tired of chasing after youngins. But I always say it's it's always entertaining. You see parents these days. Don't make me threaten you one more time, you know. <laughs> and, and here they go again. But God doesn't threaten. He ain't gonna say don't. He will stand and he will do what he has to do. When these naysayers are coming against God's people, I think this is a, also a, a nice um, a, a thing that we can that we can hold as a, as a promise, as 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 a as a uh, another bulwark, if you will, in in a, in a shield and a hedge about us. When these things come against us, when the government says bad things about us, when other Christians say bad things about us, when that God's gonna stand up and say no, no. This, this is one of mine. Not only you, you, are you not going to do it, you can't. Because I'm standing here. It's like when a big dog bows up on one, one of your youngins. And then dad gets out there and all of a sudden the dog that was real big to the child looks awful small in dad's shadow. No, you're not, you're not barking anymore. Get on out of here. Take, take yourself on when God stands up. Uh, the, the words of the Lord are... Are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of the earth purified seven times now if we can't just use words that we use out of our mouth I, I said you know sometimes better better to keep the trap shut than to, than to have it open what can we do and, and I think here this is an offer set for the words of the Lord are pure words I, I told you you can't just not say anything to turn a blind eye to everything that's when we turn to the scripture and says brother sister I see this issue you know the Bible says X, Y, and Z. You don't have to say any more than that. The word of the Lord is going to do what it's going to do, and it says that it's, it's pure words. These are words that we can trust. I told, I, I, I mentioned briefly a minute ago about people that just tell you how good you are all the time, and just you know, just just butter you so good, you so greasy, you could slide out the door. The words of the Lord. You can rely upon them. I, I think we've talked, to, and I think it's interesting that it actually mentioned silver. Think about the mirror basin that we talked about in the tabernacle. What was it made of? It was made of polished, polished metal that they had beaten into a bowl. This was from mirrors from Egypt. And when you washed your hands in it, you could see your reflection. And it was a time of getting rid of sin and reflecting upon yourself. Every time you open this book, you're not going to find something that just makes you go, "Woo! it's a great time to be a Christian. Right. Every, a lot of the time you're going to open up and think, well, I've done it again, haven't I? But, but we can rely upon that. It says that these words are true. They're, they're, they're tried. They're, they're pure silver. There, 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 there are no. Uh, it is, and it says that it's been purified seven times. Every impurity has been rocked out of. I don't know if you've ever went to go buy jewelry, but it's always that like really high price, really worked over metals. Literally metals that are so so worked that they're actually soft to the touch. That that if you you know you squeeze a ring, you could actually bend it out of its out of its original shape because the metals are that soft. But but they're so valuable. And you can get sterling silver <laughs> over here for, you know, you can, buy, you can buy a ring that looks just like that one for $50, but that's a flatterer. It looks like the real thing, but it's nothing. 
It's based upon nothing. It's it it, it has it is it is a facsimile of the real thing. And then you have God's word, which is 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 precious and 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 hard to find and takes work to gain. But so much more valuable than the other thing. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, I think this goes along with I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. We have got to learn to shield ourselves from these words. It says the Lord's going to have... Let me read verse 8 real quick and then we'll come back to this point. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Now, this is going to play into the point that I'm fixing to make. We're we're saved people. You're in a world that does not respect God and that is crawling with vile people. They are crawling with people that will tell you any number of things. There are there are they 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 will, they will tell you how good you are. They'll tell you how bad you are. They'll tell you they'll tell you it's a, it, 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 that you know that that sodomite marriage is okay. It's okay if you sleep around with your wife. It's okay if you take somebody else's stuff. It's okay to riot whenever you're upset because it's a victimless crime. It's okay to uh to to cheat and steal to win what you want. It's okay to do all these things. If we trust in the Lord, he will he says he's going to preserve them from this generation forever. So there is a place where we can go to keep our minds pure. We're never going to be able to separate ourselves from this world because we currently dwell in it. Spiritually speaking, though, we can go to the one who has the silver words, the pure silver words, and gain preservation in that place. He says that he, when it, whenever these things come up, whenever whenever these people puff up, as he's going to literally set us aside and protect us and keep us. And but how does that happen? Well, we 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 need to walk close to him. How is he going to pick us up? And set us in a safe place if we're way over yonder, away from Him. A lot of the promises of God are conditional, not on Him. His word is always true, but they're conditional on you. And that's where we fall down. That's where we most often find ourselves. Uh, I don't know how I've got here. Really, you don't? When's the last time you cracked your Bible open? I'm, I, I'm sure there are several chapters and verses that would be very applicable to the situation in which you found yourself. The living word of God is always going to prove. So when we go about this daily life and we're hearing all these things around us, I, I, I think one of the worst things about this coronavirus, and, and, and I'm not even talking about the deaths, um, People dying is sad. People dying is rough. But people die every day. It is appointed unto man once to die. I think the one of the worst things about it, though, is the sheer amount of misinformation. You talk about a, a, a time where people are speaking vanity and having double-heartedness, where first they're saying one thing, then they're saying another. We, you don't know what to think. You don't know what to believe. And in an age where increasingly, not just, you know, coronavirus news, but everything is starting to become like that. You don't know what to think. You don't know what to believe because nobody's telling you the truth. Can I point you, dear Christian friend, to some silver words that can be foundational? That, And again, if it takes us back to our chapter 11 um, uh, look, but that can be a foundation when all other foundations are breaking. When you, when, when you literally feel like you're standing in quicksand, reach for the rock. It is the only thing that can help you. It is the only thing that can support you. And you will find solace. Now, will you find the answers to all life's questions? They're in there if you dig long enough. But in the situation in which you exist, I promise you, you will find something if you seek. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I don't know if that way, you know, I don't know if that's, you know, if I, if I seek a million dollars, am I going to get, I don't think that's how it is, but I think that we can find silver and gold, things that are tried with fire. 
and that have stood the test of times. Hold your Bible in your hand and look at it because you're looking at something that has been tested with 6,000 years of history. And yet it still stands and it still lays there before you. Am I gonna am I gonna go with this or something that I don't does Dan rather do anything? Is he dead now? I don't, I don't even. He's, 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 oh, I about to say, uh, it was, it's been it's been a long time since I've watched the evening news, but it, it, this has been around a lot longer than any news story that that CNN or Fox can throw at you. This has been around so much longer than any of those things, and I promise you, whatever situation you're in, there's a foundational truth that you can that you can set. You say, okay, this is the place where I'm going to start from. This a place of strength. And everybody else can say whatever they want. I know that I'm secure. I know that I'm in a place of victory. I mean, I think this goes back right to your salvation. We place our faith and trust in God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, what? Was God. If you can place your soul's trust in Him, when you go looking for answers to life's question, you can put your trust in Him again because He will have something for you there. Any questions or comments about Psalms chapter 12 before we wrap up today? If, I'm sorry. Uh, if not, we will uh, we will dismiss. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. We're, we're running right up on, if you're watching, happy Thanksgiving to you. You're coming up upon the, I think the only really American holiday and the, uh, the uh, also the only, uh, um, the, and the most biblical holiday that there is. So, uh, 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 happy Thanksgiving. Y'all have a great week. God bless. And we'll be dismissed. Thank you very much.